Hello friends, it's Patricia Weirakon here, back with the second video on the sexual response. In our last video, we discussed the sexual response and how in general terms, men and women respond differently in terms of our sexuality. We're talking about a couple response. In general, we talked about men being more spontaneous and women being more responsive. So in today's video, I want to talk a little more in detail about the women and our female sexual response, especially the desire bit of it. What firstly is sexual desire? Desire is a brain feeling, an emotion that says, I want sex. It's a wanting. It's an appetite. Now it's driven by testosterone in men and women. But interestingly, compared to men, whose responses are far more influenced by testosterone, women have a lower biological urge for sexual release. Even though we are driven by testosterone, it's much less biology. It's far more situational or contextual in terms of what drives a woman's sexual desire. Now let's go to our diagram here. Right at the top, you see that box that says sexual neutrality. What does this mean? It means that many women will go into sexual activity basically like, I'm really not turned on and swinging from the chandelier, but you know what, if I am offered it, maybe I don't mind it. It's a bit like, you know, you've just been somewhere and a friend says, you want to go by and have a hamburger on the way home? And you're like, I really, you know, not hungry, but I like the company. And I so I think I'll stop and have the hamburger with my friend. That kind of appetite, not really like I want, but okay, let's try it. However, you see in the middle there, there's a spontaneous sexual desire. There are times, in fact, early in a relationship and early in marriage, spontaneous desire is what drives our desire. It's like, I want. I'm sure if you newlyweds and newly in loves know that feeling. And that's part of our life story. Even later in relationships, researchers tell us, and I know that personally, that novelty and new situations, something exciting happening as a couple can bring back that spontaneous. But however, as I said earlier, for many, it is a responsive sexual desire. It is a motivation, a willingness to have sex. Now, what brings this on? Let me just give you a few situations. Many rewards or gains, external, contextual. The commonest is an enjoyment of the intimacy, the sensual intimacy that sex brings as a couple. It's a woman thinking, you know, it feels so good to be held and cuddled. And I love that afterglow of being together. Oh, it makes him really happy. And that feeds my feelings of happiness and intimacy. Sometimes the drive is I really want a child and that drives my desire. I need to get pregnant. I want to get pregnant with this man. Sometimes Desire can be even driven by the need for power or money or some other 
reason, status, self-esteem. And sadly, in some dysfunctional relationships, even driven in a way to prevent or to soften the conflict. Sometimes, and we must state this too, some women actually struggle with problems with desire. They actually have a problem, a distress as we call it, because they don't feel desire. In fact, the commonest concern that many couples therapists face is what we call discrepant desire, the kind of he wants, she wants, where usually in this situation, especially he wants sex and she's like really distressed by the fact that she doesn't want it. What, what could cause this? It could be biological. For instance, one common thing is postpartum or soon after, after you had a baby. Look, your body is tired. Sometimes your genitals are actually quite sore and tender. And so for you, are like thinking, I don't want to have intercourse. You might want the kissing and the cuddles, but no intercourse. Please don't go there. Also, when you're breastfeeding, there's a hormone called prolactin and the levels go up. That's part of the breastfeeding. And that actually pushes down your desire and even your androgen, your testosterone level. You're probably tired with this new baby. So this is one of the biological situations. Sometimes it can be due to other illnesses like depression or maybe a side effect of a drug you're taking. Also, maybe some changes in your genital if you're having discomfort with sexual intercourse. And with aging, the vagina gets dry and the lining thinned and you might feel discomfort. And this can cause you feeling, oh, I don't want to go there. This is a reason for pain. These are things you need to talk to your partner about. Because the common cause for distress is relationship factors. A couple's relationship can enhance or diminish the quality of erotic feelings in a woman. Conflict and marital discord are often the top predictors for distress, sexual distress and low subjective desire in women. Again, it's about talking about your feelings with your partner. Sometimes there are cultural and family issues poor sex education or no sex education. And therefore you kind of grow up thinking sex is something only just to have babies, not to be enjoyed and the body is kind of somehow shameful or dirty. This of course is completely wrong. We are created for one man, one woman, marriage, good sex. Again, you need to talk about it. In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 7, it says, husband, your body belongs to the wife. Wife, your body belongs to the husband. That's how beautiful. The whole Bible is so sex positive. Don't allow any negative impressions when you're growing up affect that when you're in a marriage situation. Another sad thing we see is the effect of pornography on girls. And the, the belief that, you know, porn sex is what sex is about. That can push down your desire for your spouse. Another really sad one is that there is any early exposure to abuse or any form of sexual harassment. And if that is you, please get help because that's something you really need to deal with. Don't be ashamed to ask for help. For more on desire, we go back to an earlier video I did, actually it's sex video number one, which is Christian sexologist talks about desire. We trace more about what happens in the brain there. Now, when you enter sexually neutral and the, whatever the motivation is, you become receptive to sexual stimuli. That's the number two box there. 
And then, especially if you are able to communicate with your spouse, I'm talking to every woman there who's listening to this, there is nothing wrong. In fact, it is absolutely necessary that you share with your spouse what you enjoy, what part of your body you like touched or kissed or held and even tickled and how you like it done. Read the Song of Songs. The whole book is about sensual enjoyment between husband and wife. Share, ask and tell, talk about what turns you on. That's what receptive. Because when you do that, then your body, woman, women, gets aroused and your vagina becomes ready for sex and, you know, vulva gets filled with blood and you're feeling that good feeling down there. Then your desire levels go up. Now, you may not be even aware of your genital changes. That's another interesting thing in women. They can, the feeling of desire and the genital changes, we call it vasocongestion and swelling. We call it sexual arousal. These merge and reinforce each other. Can you see those arrows going in all like reverse directions? You're receptive, you feel desire, your body gets aroused, and these all feed one into the other. So the more you are aroused, the more desire you feel, the more desire you feel, the more aroused you are, the more you are able to stimulate and be stimulated. Isn't that fascinating? Now, some of you may be thinking, wait, 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 what about orgasms? Oh, that's another interesting point. For women, orgasms or that orgasmic release is nice, but not necessary. And many women will describe having a really satisfying experience without that kind of fireworks experience in their brain of that terrific orgasm jumping off the bed type thing. Even that, if you feel that brain orgasm, every woman will describe it differently. But basically, it's a satisfaction. And again, that feeds into the feeling of intimacy. It's a sort of circular feeding. That's why we call it responsive. It's all responding one to the other. So what can you do if you are fitting into any of these categories we discussed of like, you know, responsive and, you know, you want to, you don't know what to do. We have a book that can help you. It's a book called The Best Sex for Life. And I've got it there. You can see it there and it's available. You can go to my website there, patriciawirakun.com and you can find out where you can get it. It's a, it's a really good book to read and it talks about the response, everything we talked about. I would particularly recommend an appendix, appendix two at the back of the book, which is called Sensual Discovery Pathways for Couples. And particularly in this, we have uh, under the activities, we ask you to read Song of Songs and enjoy reading and experimenting with every one of your sensual experiences of touch and smell and taste. And I'll leave the rest to you to read the book and enjoy practicing it. Let me give you a few guidelines before we finish. The first thing is to be comfortable with sexuality, with your body, with your senses. Some of you might have heard of a practice called mindfulness. This is being aware of your body and how you feel. Reading good books like The Best Sex for Life, it as a couple really helps, which of course leads to 
communicate, talk to each other. So be comfortable, communicate. Thirdly, compromise. It's not about I want, you want, that self-gratification. True fulfilling marriages and sexuality and best sex is when each looks to the other and says, how can I make this good for you? Your body is mine. My body is yours. Other focused loving brings the best desire and the best sex. But let me finish with this. Never be ashamed to ask for help. Never be ashamed to ask for help. It is okay to say, I'm struggling. Who can I talk to? So talk to your doctor. Talk to, if you're a Christian and in church, talk to your minister. People are there to help you. Never be ashamed to ask for help. And so I'll finish there. Come back again and we will talk a little bit about what is it about sexual desire and men. Till then, I'll see you.